Hey, it's Mark Podolsky, The Land Geek, with your favorite niche real estate website, www.thelandgeek.com. We've got the usual suspects today on this week's roundtable. We've got the dude buddy, the nightcap meister, Scott Bossman. Scott, how are you? Great, Mark. How are you? Good, good. Bearland Aaron Williams. Bearland, how are you? Doing great. Good to see you. The technician, Eric Peterson. Eric, how are you? I'm good. And of course, the most feared woman on the planet, the terrorist hunter, Mimi Schmidt. Mimi, how are you? I'm great. I'm happy to be here. How are you doing today? Pulse is still normal. Respiration's fine. I love it when you call me Big Papa. Tate Litchfield. Hey, guys. What's going on? Um, by the way, I don't know if everybody knows, but you can look over Tate's shoulder. Just go to thelandgeek.com forward slash lots, L-O-T-S, which stands for look over Tate's shoulder. And last but not least, the brain, the professor, the land geek, uh, flight school Sherpa, Scott Todd from scotttodd.net, landmoto.com, investor ninjas. And if you're not automating your Craigslist and your Facebook postings, postingdomination.com forward slash the land geek, Scott Todd, how are you? Mark, I'm great. Like, I, I'm, I've like recovered from flight school live. It's been like, I wasn't here last week. Cause like I was like out. I think, you know what? Let's talk about that because you are an entrepreneur. You just started a new startup investor ninjas and you went to a seminar with kind of a big deal in his world. Um, yeah. Kind of give us the, the lowdown and that's going to lead us into our, our round table discussion. So I, last week I went to a seminar and it was a three-day seminar, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. And the, the, it was for entrepreneurs, right? Like it was, it was an entrepreneurial seminar. And it was really talking about, you know, kind of access shift, shifting businesses and everything. It was a really cool seminar. I really, really enjoyed it. The, the weird thing, though, like the thing that really I felt out of, out of place in is I think I was the only real estate investor. Let, let's stop it there. I think I was the only real estate investor in the room. And, you know... Uh, every afternoon there were these guest speakers and they were, you know, people from this guy's community and he'd get up there and he'd talk and like they would get up there and they would tell their stories. And remember, Mark, these are hardcore entrepreneurs, right? Like these are not people that are, that are taking what I would call the easy route, which is real estate investing or better yet land investing. They're out there and they're trying to like change the world. I mean, they are really talking about changing the world stuff. Like like the unicorns of the world, right? Like that's what they want to be. That's what they envision. And look, there's, there's a mix of like roofing companies out there and, you know, nutritional supplement companies and one company where they're trying to change the education system. Think about that one. Like they're trying to change the public school education system. It's a very big mission, but it's just, they're, they're bootstrapping it. And I'm sitting there and I'm talking to other entrepreneurs and it was amazing because they're talking about like all these hours they work, you know, uh, oh, 60, 70, 80 hours, how much money they've invested in their businesses. Like one guy told me that he has spent more than like a million and a half dollars to automate his warehouse. Okay. And like he was dependent on Google and he was dependent on Amazon. He was doing great the Google SEO and Amazon uh, vendor orders, not even a seller central, the vendor orders. And then like literally within a couple of months of each other, Google pulls back their algorithm, changes it, he drops his SEO. Business goes from like a million dollars a month down to about uh, $300,000 a month. 70% gone just from Google changing. Then the next punch came from Amazon because Amazon changed their algorithm and boom, guess what? He goes from like 300,000 down to like 250, 200 to 250 a month, like 80% of his business gone. He's starting all over again. And, you know, then there was another couple up there and they, they're the ones trying to change the education system. And they're talking about this 15 year journey where like they were on the brink of bankruptcy. They literally, the, the, the co-founder, the, the female co-founder was on the stage crying because she was saying that one year ago at this time, she was giving up like, it was over. They were getting ready to shut down the business. And then like out of the blue, one big order came in and it righted, righted the ship. And next thing you know, they're buying their competitor. Like really cool stories. 
But I'm sitting there thinking like, man, these are like the hardcore entrepreneurs getting punched in the teeth all day long trying to create this business. And when someone thinks about creating their own business, this, these are the stories they think about. And I'm sitting there going, man, we have it easy. Like this is the, I want to stand up and say, stop, everybody stop. Come with me. Let me, sh let me tell you about a different plan that won't drive you insane and you'll keep all your hair and keep all your money and actually you'll make money. And it really got me thinking like, as land investors, what's been the biggest challenge that you have faced and have you ever, like I've never seen at one of our boot camps someone on, on, in the front on Grill the Geeks up there crying that, that they were losing it all and then like one big deal came in. In fact, the people that I see that have tears in their eyes have it because of how better their life is after entering the program. So I'm just curious, like who's had the, what, what's your biggest land investing nightmare and I guess, how'd you overcome it? Scott Bossman, let's start with you. You're on mute, Scott. There you go. Uh, first of all, hearing about that uh, it just really puts things in perspective because did I work hard to get my land business up and going? Yes. Did I, was it a side hustle for me? Was I getting up early and staying up late? Yes. But really, when you think about it, the barrier for entry for this business is so low when it comes to cash flow, when it comes to time, because you just need a few hours here and there and you can start moving the needle in your life. That, uh, I mean, it just makes me thankful hearing what, what Scott just said. As far as my biggest challenges, I mean, I'm, I, you know, I, I have a different background than, than a lot of folks. I have no business background. I, getting into this, I had no business background at all, uh, at all no experience in sales, uh, no experience in accounting or, or really using the computer all that much. Um, so for me, you know, biggest challenges were just some of those logistics and, and learning how to get things up and running. But again, very simple compared to the things Scott is describing. And then I guess the, the next biggest challenge for me was just learning how to leverage my time uh, because it was a side hustle for me. So how could I most effectively uh, gain traction, sales, land, you know, land purchases, and, and, and use other people to help leverage my time. And uh, that's been, you know, a, it's been a, a work in progress. It still is. Uh, but, you know, still looking at where I was a few years ago to now, it's just an unbelievable change. So I guess for me, that's been, that was the biggest challenge. Nice, nice. Berlin Aaron, how about you? Um, you know, I guess I did, I did have another business. I was one of those getting kicked in the teeth every day kind of entrepreneurs. And, um, that business is still around. It's, I've turned it into a side hustle for my son while he's in college. Um, but when I shifted over to land, one of my biggest struggles, and I still struggle with it was, um, letting go of things and getting other people to do them for me and wrapping my head around it's okay to spend that money to do that because in my previous iteration you know it was brick and mortar it was a service company and it was me doing everything you know eventually I did hire somebody um, to do do work too but then then I actually had you know traditional payroll and that's a pain um, you know, even just one employee, like doubles the workload in the, uh, office side of it, you know? So I came into the land business still thinking about that, still with that kind of experience. And it made it very hard for me to let go of things. Cause you know, I'm the only way one that's going to do it the way I want to do it. Um, you know, I had to learn that I could, you know, just record myself doing it and then somebody else will do it the way I want to do it. Um, and, you know, through our business, I, I was able to learn that there's very affordable ways to hire work for this kind of business, workers for this kind of business. Says I don't have to have a payroll. You know, we have virtual assistants. There's great automation tools um, that can help let go of things. Um, and, and, and honestly, if you Tate talks about this, when we talk about VAs and stuff, and, and I think Eric does and everybody does really is like, you know, think of those couple things like, um, will this person 
make me money or will they free me up? Will they, you know, will I gain time from it? You know, and those kind of things are, uh, the amount of money that we pay for those is um, a very high value to expense ratio, something that I'm, I wasn't used to before. So that's letting go of those things. Um, I still struggle a little bit, but you know, every day is an improvement. And that was, that was my biggest struggle. Um, and this business is just amazing because of the way it can free you up to be able to live life and have time and, and that passive income to allow you to do that. Yeah, absolutely. Letting go. How about you, Mimi? Biggest struggle. Well, I am definitely my greatest obstacle, right? If I could just get out of my own way, I'd be a heck of a lot farther along. <laughs> so, and it's not just with automation and delegation. For me, it's really fear. Oh gosh, is this county going to be a good county? Oh my gosh, I'm so worried, right? And until you get in there and you figure it out and th then you realize, oh, this is no big deal because you figured it out. But then let's say I'd get in county with particular size property. And as I scaled my business, I bought some, took more risk and bought some bigger properties. Oh my gosh, I've never bought a property this expensive before. It's going to work out in my favor. You know, and I get all nervous. And, um, but then after I've done it a couple times, right? I just, through execution, I, I learn to not be so fearful, but I still feel it. With every new step I take in my business, I still have, I still question myself, right? So that's just who I am, right? And I just have to uh, push myself to move forward. And uh, that's the way I deal with it, I guess. I mean, do you, do you subscribe to the philosophy, feel the fear, and then just keep taking action? That's it. I have to take action or I won't do it. All right. I'll be too afraid to ever do it. Right. And I know once I get on the other side, for instance, when I move into a new County, Oh gosh, I'm so scared. But, um, the more I learn about the County, the, the fear goes away. Right. So now I just need to enter like five more. Well, not that I want to be in there at the same time. I just have to not be so afraid. And the more I experiment, the more I learn which counties I really like. Right. So, it's just a matter of doing. Nice, nice. The technician, Eric Peterson. How about you, biggest challenge? Well, first of all, I think, you know, after hearing Scott talk and, and kind of think about, you know, what other entrepreneurs go through. I mean, we are just so fortunate that um, the nature of our business allows us to essentially work from wherever we want to work um, and also work with the people we want to work with. So um, being that our business is pretty much all online, um, we have the ability to, to hire VAs in, in the Philippines or wherever and um, help them uh, or allow them to help us grow our business and, and do different tasks along the way. So not every business can do that. I mean, if you're in a, a service business and you know, you're local and you're a, a roofer or whatever, I mean, you can't hire virtual assistants in, in the Philippines or wherever to, um, to come put shingles on a roof. I mean, maybe you can hire out the accounting or something like that, but the nature of our business, I mean, we can really outsource almost all of it. So, so that's really cool. Um, so I guess uh, in terms of my challenges, when I first got started, um, I think it was probably in the sales arena um, and accounting. Um, never have I ever felt comfortable in the accounting world. So um, for uh, Scott's accounting courses proved to be very helpful along the way and just bringing in the right people to, to help with those problems and educate me has been very helpful. Um, on the sales side, um, I just, it was a challenge for me when I got started, but I got more and more comfortable over time, the more I stuck with it and, and just did it. Um, and then I think, um, just something that always is, is kind of in my nature is just this element of wanting things to be right or perfect. Um, so the ability to, to outsource certain tasks, um, can be a challenge, but I tell you, like, once you get to the point where you're fed up with it and you finally let it go, um, it always feels so much better. So, um, yeah, that's, that's kind of my story. 
I love it. I love it. Big Papa, Tate Litchfield. So I think my biggest biggest challenge uh, going back a couple years was kind of organization, right? I before the days of LG Pass, it was an Excel spreadsheet nightmare. I mean, we didn't have automation. It was trying to keep track of your data and your purchase price and your your offer prices. And there was just so much information to track. And that caused me to make a a few mistakes, you know, maybe overpay for a property or sell the property two or three times maybe. Um, And that was because I just didn't take good records. But now, you know, LG Pass has kind of made that that issue disappear entirely. So people that are getting into this, they really don't realize how powerful that was or that the introduction of that, that tool was for me personally, it allowed us to scale quicker, to do more deals, to do a greater volume of deals, to not make simple mistakes. And it all started with the elimination of you know, being disorganized. So organization was always a huge headache for me. And I like to say that, you know, from where I started to where I'm at now, it's a night and day difference. There's still room for improvement, obviously, and I think there always will be. But for the most part, we're not having the same mistakes or issues any longer. So that's one of the biggest pain points that I first experienced and it's kind of disappeared. Yeah, yeah. And I know, Scott, like my biggest pain point in my entrepreneurial journey um, it kind of makes, it makes me think of uh, ego is the enemy the book by Ryan Holiday. Like I, like anything that would feed my ego, I was all in on it. Right. So, you know, I wanted to be a deal junkie. I wanted to get the sales. I wanted to feel that. Oh, look at me. Right. Especially when I first started out, then as I started to, you know, start, you know, very to just dip my toe into delegation with Janie in South Carolina doing the mailings. Like I wanted her to ask me questions so I could solve problems. Right. And it wasn't until I had a, my, my business mentor kind of look at me and kick me in the head and, and knock some sense in me. Like, Mark, you don't, you're not in business. He's like, you're playing business, but you're not really in business. You're doing everything. And uh, he's like, that's not a business. So step by step, I started building that and letting go like what Eric and, and, you know, and Aaron were saying like that for me was such a challenge in just letting go, kind of having that humility, like I'm not that good at all this stuff, right? Like there's people who once they get their reps in, they're going to be better than me and I can spend time doing things that really are going to move the needle and help grow the business in various ways that I can enjoy doing. And it, it was, it, it took five years to get to that point. It was not easy. And even to this day, like, I'll check Voxer. I'm like, does anybody have a question? Can I solve something? What about you, Scott? Wait, you're on mute. I would say that for me, my biggest challenge when I got, was when I got going. And what made it a big challenge was my time. Is I didn't have a lot of time. And I know that's a problem that a lot of people have is this whole concept of time. And, you know, I think that what happens is – you, you know, like I, I had t- time was time was my worst enemy in two ways. One, I didn't have it to give to the business. And then two is I knew at some point in the future, I didn't know when that the pink slip was coming. Like I could just see it. I could feel it. I, I felt the shift in the forces, if you will. I just, your hunch, your gut tells you like this is coming. So I, I was competing against two times. One is I didn't know when I was going to be out, but I knew it was coming. And then the second was, I didn't have the time to dedicate to the business. That, that, those were the two pieces. And so when I looked at it and I said, okay, well, I got to do this. Like, there's no option. This is it. This is, I, my ship is burned, right? I can't get off the beach at this point. So what am I going to do? So I realized like, okay, listen, I've got to get rid of this work that is not going to move the needle in my life, right? You know, so essentially I looked – very closely at everything that I did. So if it did not get me to the the mission, which was to add money to the passive income, I didn't do it. So the only thing that I could identify that would add to the passive income was sales. That's it. 
Everything else is a supporting role to that one thing. And so in that case, what I did was I took on the sales piece of it. And every day I committed, like every day I'm going to get something else off my plate. It could be one little step. It doesn't need to be the whole list scrubbing thing, but can I get someone to at least give me a list and I'll still price it. Okay. So like, and then I did it for a few, a few days. They gave me the list. And next thing you know, I'm like, okay, here's how you price it. So if you start to think like, I cannot do this anymore. I didn't like it either, but I can't do this anymore or due diligence. I can't do this anymore. I've got to get rid of it because the number one mission is to build the passive income. There was a sense of urgency around it. And so building that passive income became the number one job. And so if it was not feeding to a sales call, I was out. So I still did my marketing because that led to the sales calls, right? Like I got rid of the, the low, lowest important stuff and then I, I took on the most important stuff. And that's really, you know, I think at some point you have to, if you want this thing to work for yourself, I think what you have to do is you really have to, you, one, you have to commit. Like, look, I, I'm going to do this. Come hell or high water, I'm doing this thing. And then what is my most important role? And everything else has got to go. Everything. It's, it's uh, in my Sunday video just a couple days ago, I, I, I talked about how, in Great Britain, there was a, a rowing team, you know, like a, row, a boat rowing team. And every year they finished like sixth, seventh, eighth place. And they did this for years and years and years. And then one day they were tired. Of it. They're like, this cannot continue. So then they, they went back and they said, if what we're going to do does not make the boat go faster, it's off the table. So that became their central question. Every, everything that they did question answer that one question does this make the boat go faster if the answer is no it's off the table will this add to my passive income if that's your goal will this add to my passive income yes i'm gonna do it no somebody else has got to do it who's gonna go do it and then i had to get rid of it and so i think that's really that was a hard shift for me is because i had to like throw everything off the boat to make the boat lighter so that i could actually go and do the work no, it totally makes sense. And you know, what's so funny is I, I think if, if you're an entrepreneur listening to this and you have any kind of physical inventory, that sucks. What a pain it is to deal with physical things. Like my son uh, became executive director of a, a nonprofit and it's called Games for Kids and it's giving, you know, taking recycled electronics and, and you know, fixing it and giving it to kids who are underprivileged. And he took, he takes over this, this nonprofit and I've got like drop boxes in my garage and all these envelope things in my garage. I'm like, this is terrible. Like you gotta have space for stuff. And it just made me like, just so grateful that we just shuffle paper and, and make money and don't have to have any space really. It's great. It's amazing. I don't know. Just kind of made me think of that. So I mean, I, Mark, I, I saw uh, uh, an email from someone the other day and they're saying, uh, will you drive neighborhoods to take pictures of houses to make $10,000? And I'm like, yeah, that'd be pretty good. But man, do I really want to be in a car for that long? You know, like I, I can, I can have people shuffling paper and I'm not doing nothing. I don't even want to be in a car for make $10,000. I won't even park anymore. Like I, I like there's, I just Valley park. I, I can't like look for a spot anymore. I'm like, this is life's too short. I'm going to, you know, do that. Um, like even, even like, uh, like my son's got graduation. I already said to my wife, I'm like, we're not parking. It's like, it's at ASU. I'm like, let's just take an Uber down there. I'm not parking. You start thinking differently when like you see how like time, time versus money you can yeah. always make more money. I can't get more time. Um, you know, if you have a horse, you can park right up at the front, right? That's right. No, that's no I didn't right. know that. Kate, what's that? What's that song? That rap song that's got like little country. Something about the horse. Oh, uh, old old town road. I think it is. Old town road. Yeah. Aaron, yeah, that's that's Maryland Aaron. Aaron. I was just thinking that I was gonna pull it up and play it for him, but yeah. That's Aaron. Isn't uh, <laughs> the Icky Breaky Heart guys on that, right? Yeah, uh, I think Cyrus. so. Yeah. What's Billy Ray Cyrus? Yeah. There you go. Zeno should be on this call. He he would know. He's a big country fan. Not so much with rap though. All right. So the tip of 
the week. I, I hope everybody got a lot of the entrepreneurial uh, discussion, but now it's time for us to haze Mimi and ask her for the tip of the week, a website, a resource, a book, maybe even a quote, something actionable for the art of passive income listeners to go improve their businesses, improve their lives. What have you got? And while you're thinking of it, I do want to just mention that today's podcast is sponsored by Flight School and Flight School Live. So if you are kind of shaking your head and thinking, yeah, time is really way more important than money, then you owe it to yourself to learn more about how Flight School can launch you into your own land business. Go to thelandgeek.com forward slash training, schedule a call with the Nightcap Meister, Scott Bossman, or the Zen Master, Mike Zeno. So thelandgeek.com forward slash training. Mimi, what do you got? So it's a website. It's called Fine Law. And I just use it for general questions about the law with, with dealing with deeds and that kind of thing. So just, for instance, the site that I sent is just explains the difference between tenancy in common, joint tenancy, rights, and survivorship. And I also sent a link on easements. So we have so many coaching students that ask us these legal questions. And we're not attorneys, but there are places out there that are great resources for that kind of information. Um, I have, I've had a rocket lawyer account too for three years that I ask tricky questions and they've always been super helpful. But generally, if I have a question, I just go out there and look on this site, findlaw.com. So they have a special, a special section just for real estate law. I love it. I love it. I know we, but we have a bunch of attorneys in the community. Um, I just wish, you know, well, actually I don't wish. I know Roberto Chavez could retire tomorrow from law and just become like full-time land investor. And then like our side real estate attorney. That'd be kind of cool. Tate, should we talk to Roberto about it? Yeah. Yeah, that'd be pretty sweet. I mean, we just got to convince him. Right. I know. I said, he's still on, like dude. practicing though. He's not going to. Yeah. I mean, he enjoys it. He's having fun with it now because it's not like his only gig, right? He's got this right. too. So. Yeah. All right. This is a good one. So realestate.findlaw.com. We'll, uh, we'll have a link to it. All right. So I thought this was a great podcast. Great uh, round table discussion. Eric Peterson, are we good? We're great. We're great. Bearland? Excellent. Good. Uh, Scott Bossman? Dude, buddy? Party on. All right. Speaking of, I, I assume you and Aaron are going to go drinking right now? It's like afternoon. Yes. It, it is uh, 2.30 on a Tuesday, so yeah, we'll be hitting that. 2.30 on a Tuesday? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> 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 Uh, Mimi, are we good? We're great. Good. Okay. Tate? Yeah, solid. Scott, Todd? We're good, Mark. All right. Well, I want to thank all the listeners. Just remind them, you know, if you're enjoying the podcast, share it with a friend, go on the interwebs, forward it to a friend. Um, certainly, just give us three little favors. We really appreciate it. You got to subscribe. You got to rate. You got to review the podcast. Send us a screenshot of that review to support at the We're going to send you for free the $97 passive income launch kit. All right. Are we doing this? We are Mark. One, two, three, let, let freedom, freedom ring. ring. Not bad. Not bad. Sound like a good one over here. So, what did you guys think of that picture where Tate was actually going to the Cheesecake Factory? We already discussed this, Scott, since you what? bailed on us last week. We discussed it. We laid it to rest. We I know it was it? Just you being creepy, looking over my shoulder. Everybody <laughs> knows. It's, yeah, it's been settled. On to looking the next one. Tate's shoulder, what can I say? I no, will tell you, Tate, and, and, you know, Tate, that restaurant that we went to oh. was so – I was craving it again. And I dragged my wife all the way back down there on Sunday. I'm like, we're going here. She's like, Wait, can we go to the here? Columbia? No, no, no. This is a new one. No, no. It's different, Mark. You're, you're outside the loop now. So, you know, it was good. It was really good. 
we went back. I got a brisket taco. Ooh. Really Johnny, good. next time you got to get the El Pastor tacos. It's only on Friday, though. Only on Friday. Well, I know where you'll be Friday then. Maybe. Maybe. Look at Mark. He looks visually upset about this. I am upset. He was. I don't, I don't, I don't like this. I'll tell you what. We ate so Vegas, well. Vegas boot camp, Tate. Like, we really got to take it to a new level. We ate so well. And I mean, I had, we had Cubans like they were going out of style, number one. And we went to this one restaurant that Scott took me to for lunch one day. And like, I'm checking out, I got a Cuban and there's, I don't even know what it was to this day, but the guy was like, I was like, what's that? He's like, uh, just mumbled. And it's like, double huh? crab, double crab. Yeah. It was something, it was something crab. And I, I couldn't understand. I was like, huh? He's like, uh, I was like, all right, just give it to me. And it was amazing. Best decision ever. I think I'm just going to allow like them to decide what I eat from here on out because the restaurant was fantastic. The Cuban, I ordered the small, only ate half of it. It was so massive. I, I will like get my anymore. revenge. I'm going to get my revenge. Like you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to call the Columbia. I'm going to have them ship me on dry ice, a bunch of Cubans, dirty rice. It's going to get here. And then I'm going to do a Facebook Live, and I'm just going to be eating it in slow motion. And then, like, you're going to see scrolling through the screen. Tate, this bite's for you. Scott Todd. This bites for you. I'll That's be there. What's the problem? Belly. I'll just be there. <laughs> oh no! Oh no! 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 And then I'm gonna I'm gonna call the manager. I'm like, this guy, if yeah. he comes in, yeah, eighty six him. Eighty six. Like, you know, he can't. He, like, that place was good. Can't order. We had a lot of great food there, Mark. Like, man. Yeah. And my wife is now searching for our next restaurants to, to for the flight school live. Nice. What's this picture? Oh, the horse and bike. Is that Bearland? It's <laughs> <laughs> Mimi. <laughs> is that Mimi? Aaron in the cart. We just got to maybe just send us a picture of of, uh, of Bearland in the in the horse and buggy. That's cool. Very cool. All right. So um, Scott Bossman, are we excited for the next Star Wars movie? Or is it the last movie? Uh, is this it? It's it's the well, it's the last movie in the Skywalker saga, episode nine, December, twenty nineteen. There are more trilogies to come. Didn't they just sign okay. on for six new ones or something? Two more trilogies, I think, in the future. Yes. That's crazy. Yeah. Speaking of bad trilogies, don't go see John Wick. Was it bad? I like John Wick. Uh, who doesn't like a? A nice, vicious, you know, gratuitous violence of body counts. Everyone does. But after a while, it just becomes, okay, same thing over and over. You know what I'm watching on Hulu, which is fantastic, a new series. It's called Killing Eve. You seen oh, that one? Love, love Killing Eve. Oh, it was fantastic. Mimi, download season, it. Season one, though, I think is better than season two. I just started season one like this Wait, last Mimi, you're on, you're on mute. Did you watch Lucifer? No. You have to watch Lucifer. Season four just came out. It's great. And we spent yesterday watching John Wick one and two to prepare for three. And you're telling me I should, it's not even worth going. <gasps> well, I mean, I, I would watch it on cable. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but like to spend money on it, I don't know. Okay. I'd, like to get, I'd like to get those two hours back. Honestly. Did your kids like it? Um, no. He's like, uh, yeah, you know, I got it. He's like, it was okay. Oh. I went to one of those, those theaters, like, they serve him food. So I think he liked the food. Yeah. That was cool. That was cool. You know, it's, it's fun. We went to, it was like a guy's night out, like his buddy and my buddy. And it was, it was all right. It's oh, like after cool. a while, it's like, okay. Yeah. Another dead guy. That's cool. Yeah. Very good. All right. Well, everybody have a great uh, rest of your day. And uh, see everyone in a little bit. See ya. Scott, Scott Bossman, vox me. I'll vox you. I'll, I'll fly down there and uh, eat those Cubans with you. That'll make Scott Todd jealous. Uh, honestly, everyone except Scott Todd is welcome. 
Like we should have like, yeah. I can, sure. I can form my own posse. It's okay. Here we go again. Here we go again. Oh. Here we go. Just end the I recording, think, Mark. You, Just you know what? The, the Taylor, you are against me. I, know I, I can tell me. you right now, my next call is, is to Danielle. We're catering Indian the whole week at boot camp. Hey, listen, good news. I got money. <laughs> 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 yeah, but at boot camp, you don't have time. Oh, I can make time. Don't you worry. Listen, Nate is proof that I can make time to eat. Yeah. I'm going to eat. Let's go. Uber Eats, man. Uber Eats. Trust me. Trust me. And it's Vegas, too. It's not like you're going to be starving. There's so much good yeah. food here. They'll bring me food on a silver platter just for the right price. Mm-hmm. But I do like the idea of Indian. I got a new restaurant for us. Oh, nice. I'm for it. All right. All right. See you guys. More of the orange stuff. <laughs> orange stuff. <laughs>